Uh, I went back to get Pauly. You were missing him? Yeah. He was out of jail? Yeah. Pauly. When he was picked up, was it for pimping? For, for they tried to charge him with that, mm -hmm. um, but they weren't able to. They didn't have enough evidence. That was the original charge out. And they charged him with uh, paraphernalia and possession. And he did in you know, like 30 days. Three days. Yeah, you know, very, like nothing. Um, but I went back to get poorly. I felt bad that I had left him there. I felt guilty. Um, I really and truly thought that this man loved me and that he cared about me and what he did. Hold it. She wants to know if she can borrow them. <laughs> 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 Leslie, hey, let me get this like straight. You own those shoes and gave them away? Yeah. They're brand new. You have them for a reason. But you know, I never got to see you in those shoes. No. I get to see you in the shoes you're wearing now. I prefer sneakers. Apparently. My apologies. I thought I had it off. It's rolling, so you can just. Oh, okay. All right. So, what did Polly look like? Well, he was black. Um, he was short, and um, he had a lot of tattoos. He looked actually very kind. He had a very round face, um, very sincere eyes. Basically, every man that I talked with out there was um, a very good talker. Um, what is that? It's a cell phone. Who's? It's mine. It's still on fire. I thought it was a fucking lawnmower. I'm sorry. I thought it was a lawnmower or something. That's why I'm like, what is they that person really doing? I'm trying to look out the window, but pay attention. Yeah, like, it mm, wasn't mine. it's probably mine. What time is it? Oh, no, it is mine. I lied. What time is it? 2.10. Okay, I yeah, know it wasn't working. Okay, let me turn this off. I apologize. Um, okay. Did you pick your kids up from school? Yeah, my daughter, I, I enrolled my daughter for a robotics class after school. A robotics class? Le um, Lego robotics. I thought, oh, cool. The robotics yeah. is, is, is hot It's the whole right thing. Now. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, really cool. I don't really understand it, but thanks. They basically build a thing with Legos, right? And there's a remote in the middle, and you control it from the laptop across the room. And make it. <laughs> My daughter's school, the Florida school, they had a robotics section as class. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Madison's like psyched about, oh my gosh. But you, you obviously know something about electronics. A little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even today, you know. Electronics. Anyway, so. I don't want to say anything. Else. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the next? Um, but okay, what I was saying is okay. that. Um, Polly, sincere eyes. Uh, yeah. All the guys that you were. You know, with, basically, yeah. Guys. They they told you what you wanted to hear. Um, I was very weak. Uh, I had been in a very bad relationship before he had a very abusive relationship, which I know now definitely contributed to um, what I went through, um, being prostitute. I have no doubt in my mind. When this relationship that you were, was sort of like the original bad relationship? Yeah. My self-worth was like negative 10. And uh, this was when you were in high school? Um, no, I'd met him when I was about 19. Mm -hmm. We stayed together till I was about 25. And what were you doing at that point in your life? Um, well, for a good portion of it, I was just being a mom. I was going to work every day and being a mom. Where were you working? Um, as a nurse's aide. You were a nurse's aide? And, yeah, in and a traumatic brain injury unit uh, in, a, in a local nursing home. Um, and you're the father of your child was this guy? That um, well, I, my oldest daughter's father is a really good guy. Um, we split up when she was about six months old. It just didn't work very, very young. And I met my two little ones' father when I was 19. We pretty much instantly started living together. It was just very, very, very negative relationship. Um, he had been a drug addict for two years before I met him, and I wasn't aware of it. 
um, like Beverly, I'd never done drugs before. I just never did drugs. I smoked pot in high school, you know, like on prom night, or I had like a beer at homecoming, but I couldn't pull a blunt. I couldn't roll up a dollar bill and stick it up my nose. I, I did that. I just didn't even know how to. You, you, you could have put crack in my hand and I would have been like, what is this, candle wax? Seriously, I wouldn't have known what it was. I, I just wasn't educated. And uh, I got together with my kid's father and uh, he introduced me to Oxycontins. And it was it, it just a downward spiral in the worst possible way um, over the years that I was with him. And um, that's why I say a lot of women that um, do prostitute or were prostituting suffer emotional trauma. They really do. Whether it was from their childhood, whether it was from their teenage years, their adult years, there is something very deep-seated. These women need people to love them and care for them and to stay in their lives. They, they need someone to really and truly care. I've heard every imaginable line, every imaginable promise, and yes, it's made me a little jaded. So tell me some of the lines, the promises that stand out. Not gonna smoke crack anymore. We're just, we're not gonna smoke. You go out and make that money and we're gonna save it. And I would run out the door thinking, oh my God, he's serious. The amount of money I was making, oh my God. I would have been so rich for the amount of money I was making as a prostitute. Were you given a quota? How much to earn? There was one guy that did that, that it was a thousand dollars. He called it a shift. He would let me come in at three o'clock in the morning and then go back out at five, five to seven. And uh, he was the only one that did that. But um, that was a big thing was I'm not, I'm, we're not going to buy drugs. We're going to save that money. We're going to get your kids back. I'm going to help you get your kids back. Uh, oh, I love you. I'm going to marry you. Um, I'm going to bring you home to my mom. Um, I'll never hit you again. I didn't mean to hit you. It was just because I... Um, I, there's, I mean, literally anything, any fabrication of the truth. Like, no, I didn't steal your food. No, I don't know who took your pants. Um, literally, like, there's just, there's no boundaries when you're out on the street like that. Um, it's not glamorous. It's not anything. You're cut down to absolutely, you're controlled. Um, and when you have a problem to begin with, like a self-esteem issue or, or anything, it makes it pretty much next to impossible to get out of yourself. You need somebody to help you, but you need somebody that's sincere. You don't just wake up one day and be like, okay, well, I love myself today, I'm a person today, and I'm just gonna stop what I'm doing today because I believe in me. You don't believe in yourself. You want to die? There were times that I smoked so much crack that I couldn't understand why am I not dead? Why am I still alive? I just wanted. I, you become so despair. Abundant and so miserable. That's why that's so important to me because I know what it feels like. When you look at those girls, there's nothing in their eyes. There's no happy, there's no sad, there's no joy. You don't, you get to the point you don't even feel pain anymore. You can get beaten and not feel it and you just keep it moving. Were you beaten by your tricks also? Oh, God, yeah. What, what? Choked, strangled, kicked in the teeth. Um, things that I just don't really like to visit. 
Who do you think were, were worse at, in the end of the day? The, the guys who you made you work for them or the, the guys who were buying? The guys who made me work for them. Most, most of the guys are actually, uh, I can't call them gentlemen, but uh, decent. Uh, but you did come across your fair share of assholes. Um, guys that were just way too rough. Um, the guys that liked to choke you. Um, the guys that would try to rip you off for your money. The guys that would have sex with you and then spit on you when you're done. Tell you you're just a whore. Get the fuck out of my truck and make you walk miles to get home. Uh, Would they pick you up and draw you somewhere? Yeah. That... Just totally demean you and degrade you, you know. Um, but the 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 Johns weren't as bad as the men that I actually had stayed with, you know, over the course of those nine months. Um, Cause it, it's very confusing because you, you want to believe that what this person is saying to you is true. And you really want to believe that they love you and they care about you and whatever they're promising to you, even if it's that they're going to bring you to McDonald's for dinner. Cause you worked so hard that you really truly want to believe that. And you don't want to upset them. You don't want to make them mad. So you go out and you go trick some more and you make some more money and you get high. And before you know it, the money's gone and they're mad. And you got to go out and do it all over again. Because you don't know what to do. And you just get used to it. And you run over and over and over again. Every time you go out, you get a little worse off. Because you get more worn down. You get mellower. Yeah. You get... Yeah. Um... There was never a time that I went out and sold my body on the street and didn't have to get high immediately afterwards. So that you couldn't feel anything? Or... Yeah. Because I know I had to go out and make money. I couldn't come back with only $60 yet. What $60? So I'd walk around with a pipe with me. And I'd smoke while I was walking down the street trying to catch another date. And Did you have regulars that would? Yep. Yep. There were very regular, um, you know, to the day, Tuesday mornings, 10 o'clock, certain corner. Um, there, were, there were men that, you know, their, their wives traveled. And, you know, it was the, the third weekend of every month that their wife was away for the weekend. Um, and they'd bring, you know, they'd want to bring you to their house for a couple hours. Um, there was a man that I saw every, every Wednesday afternoon. Every single Wednesday afternoon. That's where the, the, the times that I was locked up, that I was incarcerated. Oh, he's going to see me. Oh, he's going to pick me up. And he took you home? Or no. He just picked you up and was home? Went to a motel. Um, just crazy when I think about it, you know, because, like, you said, you know, like, my life has been very hard. And it has. It definitely has. Um, I'm not ashamed of myself. I was at one point in time. I hated myself. I don't anymore. I'm not proud of what I've done. I don't know anybody really that would be proud of what I'm doing. But uh, there's more of like a, a, a desire for me to help the girls that are still out there. There's still women out there that were out there when I was. There's women that have been out there for years upon years upon years. And it's them and their daughters now and their daughters. That, that it's, you know, two, three, four generations of women working the streets. It's crazy. You've been back out to 